All right, it is day 427 of the war in Ukraine, the Russian invasion there. Chinese state media reporting President Xi Jinping spoke to Ukrainian President Zelensky by phone today. Beijing apparently refusing to criticize Russia's invasion. Correspondent Patrick Folk is live in Singapore. He has the latest. Patrick. Yeah, well, as far as we understand, the two leaders spoke over the phone for almost an hour. And according to a readout, which was quoted by Chinese state media, President Xi Jinping said the dialogue and negotiations were the only way out of this crisis and that China's core stance was to try and uh, try to facilitate uh, peace talks between uh, Ukraine and Russia. Now, you know, these are things that we have heard before. They've been criticized by Western allies as an attempt to try and help Russia uh, stall the situation and uh, try and freeze territorial uh, gains in Ukraine and also help its uh, troops uh, reset, if, if you like. Uh, but at the same time, though, you know, the fact that the two leaders did come together and have this discussion over the phone is still a significant step. Uh, President Zelensky has been calling for talks with President Xi for some time now, and that hasn't taken place uh, really until uh, you know, since the start of the Ukrainian crisis. So, as I say, an important step. And uh, Zelensky himself also said that there was a meaningful conversation. He also uh, welcomes the fact that a, a new uh, Ukrainian ambassador had been appointed to China. Patrick Falk joining us live there from Singapore with the latest on that. Patrick, we appreciate the time. Thank you. All right. Let's get more insight on this. We wanted to welcome in Yuri Sok, an advisor to the Ukrainian defense minister. Uh, Yuri, welcome and thanks for coming on. As Patrick was laying out, again, your president, Vladimir Zelensky, speaking on the phone with China Xi Jinping. Xi Jinping had just had a meeting with Russian President Vladimir Zelensky. What is the relation, uh, Putin, Vladimir Putin, rather, uh, what's the relationship like between Zelensky and Xi? Emma, um, hello and thank you very much for inviting me. Now, we have been saying for a very long time now that for us it is very important that China uh, remains pragmatic and neutral, at least when it comes to their approach to the Russia's aggression against Ukraine. It is important for us that China does not provide Russia with the uh, weapons and with the ammunition. And uh, it is important for us that China is one of those countries which has unequivocally recognized territorial integrity of Ukraine. And most recently, the Chinese top officials have said it very clearly that China does not recognize the annexations that have been illegally conducted by Russia, neither of Crimea or of, of, of all the other parts of Ukraine in the east of our country as well as in the south. Mr. Sack, are you encouraged by the phone call with the Chinese president and President Zelensky? Well, of course, we are not a nation of uh, warmongers. Uh, and of course, I don't think there is anyone on this planet who wants to end this war more than us. And any move towards ending this war is, of course, encouraging. But I'll tell you, uh, Sean, what is more encouraging for us. When we hear the news of more weapons uh, and military assistance to Ukraine, that is what's more encouraging. Eight million Ukrainians have been um, forced to flee and find refuge abroad. Five millions more are displaced in Ukraine. And look, you know, we are all human beings. And I personally, I have two children. My daughter is seven and my son is 10. So they are not asking these days when the new Pixar animated cartoon will be released. They are asking when the United States of America will send us more weapons so that we can end the war sooner. So this is where we are at the moment, you know, uh, so that you understand the territory in Ukraine that has been heavily mined during these last 14 months is bigger than the territory of the state of New York. So and this will take at least 30 years to demine. So while we are encouraged by these diplomatic efforts, of course, the main concern for us is defeating the enemy on the battlefield. And for this, as you know by now, we need military support. And right now, we need F-16s, fighter jets. Because look, Russians are launching gliding bombs at Ukraine without actually entering the Ukrainian airspace. Every day, they're decimating our cities. They're killing our civilian peoples. Just 
last night they've launched an air raid uh, bombing attack and they've killed another uh, two civilians in a peaceful city of Kupiansk in Kharkiv region. So for us, we need to improve our air defense systems, and to improve our air defense systems, we need F-16s. So the training of our pilots needs to begin very soon. Uh, I mean, it should have actually begun a long time ago, but we are confident that there is nothing there to stop our allies to provide us with F-16s, because there are more than 4,000 of them around the world, and we just need 40 to 50. You know, Yori, when you're describing uh, your children's situation and what they're going through, it's just so heartbreaking um, because, of course, you know, children should be growing up and they should be focusing on their schoolwork and uh, having fun with their classmates. And clearly there's a different focus uh, for those children in Ukraine. I wanted to ask you, though, about the morale of the Ukrainian fighters. You talk about the, the loss of life, uh, the loss of uh, the destruction of communities and buildings and homes in the area. Uh, what's your read on morale? Look, when I said that 8 million Ukrainian, mostly women and children, have been forced to flee Ukraine, it is the same as me to say that, you know, more than half of these people have their husbands and wives and fathers fighting on the front lines. So I can assure you that the determination of those fighters, of those Ukrainian heroes who are now on the front lines defending our shared values and fighting the war of freedom, the determination of those people to end this war and reunite with their families and to give a hug to their children. Look, I haven't given a hug to my daughter and my son for more than four months now. And that's not normal because, you know, I don't want to be going around the world asking for more weapons, asking our allies. And I'm very thankful. I want to thank the American people and the American taxpayers because, trust me, we appreciate your help, help so much. We will be eternally grateful for this. But I don't want to be traveling the world and asking for weapons. I want to be taking my daughter to school. I want to be reading my daughter bedtime stories. And I cannot do that. Look, we are just like you guys. Trust me. Everything changed in our life overnight. Overnight, we became an, not a nation. We became an, an army. Like, everybody in Ukraine now is somehow related to achieving victory. The sooner, the better. I know that you mentioned the United States of America and you would like the U.S. to step up and send more weapons, more aid. The United States has done so, as you well know, which you pointed out, and thank the country for it, thank the taxpayers for billions and billions of dollars in military aid. But I'm curious to know, you do realize that the U.S. has sent more aid than any other European nation. Are you disappointed with that? Are you seeking more aid from uh, European nations as well? What is your thought on that? We are talking to... Uh European counterparties and our allies and pretty much every member of the coalition of free nations on a daily basis. Our Minister of Defense, Alexei Reznikov, he wakes up and goes to bed with one thought. Where else can I get more weapons for our army so that we can end the war sooner? Now, we are receiving a lot of assistance from our European allies as well. Trust me, we are receiving heavy artillery. We are receiving ammunition. Right now, we are even receiving tanks. And hopefully in the near future, we will start receiving fighter jets as well. Um, but, of course, you know, this is the most intense war since the Second World War. The amount of ammunition, for example, that is being used on a daily basis on the front line is staggering. Uh, you know, and this is why the enemy is taking staggering losses. Look, we have said it so many times before. Russia is a paper tiger. They are unable to... Uh, gain control even over a small city like Bakhmut. Bakhmut has become a black hole for Russians. On a daily basis, they're losing up to 500 soldiers killed in action and wounded there, right? And we are, of course, preparing for our counteroffensive, which means we need more weapons because counteroffensives presuppose the very heavy use of artillery, ammunition, tanks, armored vehicles, fighter jets. Yeah. So we need all that help from the, our European allies, from the United States of America, from mm -hmm. everybody. You know, we even speak to countries like New Zealand. Uh, Australia has been a great helper. The coalition of free nation is very large because everybody understands what is at risk. We, this is a war between good and evil, between freedom and tyranny. This is not a war for Ukraine's territory or even for the future of Ukraine's children and, 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 and families. This is a war for our shared values. This is why we stand united, and this is why we are grateful to our partners for the support that we receive. That is the Ukrainian defense and advisor to the Ukrainian defense minister, Yuri Sack, joining us live here on National Report. Uh, Mr. Sack, thank you so much for coming on. We do appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you.